Good evening, everyone. This is Molly. I am the executive director here at the RAL National Association, and I'm here with Tom Sanders. And Tom has an incredible, um, I guess it's kind of like a theme of your photography, right? So, so he has gotten into senior photography, and he's reached out to me and shared some amazing original photography with me that I was extremely stoked about. I knew I needed to share it with you guys and any other person who does marketing for their own care home in any way, because I can tell you that one of the hardest things to find is real pictures of seniors that look like seniors that you and I know, right? Or seniors that are, in this case, seniors right here that are active or people that we know like our neighbors and so i was super excited to be able to share this information with you guys and i wanted tom to come on and share this with you as well towards the end he's also going to share with you some tips on taking photographs in your care home and how you can light rooms and take good photographs for your marketing purposes as well if you have questions throughout the presentation you can use the questions tab over on the right hand side if those questions are pertaining to any issue you may have, I can help you throughout the presentation. So if you lose your presentation, usually it's just you need to click back down on the GoToMeeting button. Um, if you lose sound, there's also an audio option for you to call in. So don't worry, there's usually a way to fix it. If there's not, I will send you the recording tomorrow so you won't miss anything. Um, otherwise, Tom, thank you for being here with us and you can take it away. All right, thanks, Molly. Appreciate it. So um, this this uh, gentleman right here is 92 years old. Uh, he's actually probably now 94 years old, and he rides his bike 150 miles a week, which is just uh, so so crazy to me. You know, being that old and uh, definitely a freak of nature that he can do that. But I just think it's so inspirational uh, that at you know 92, 94 that he that he's doing this. So um, I'm going to. Uh, Give you guys a bunch of tips later uh, in the presentation. Um, so I'm going to go over bio. I'm going to show you guys um, a few of my websites, and then I give you a bunch of tips on how to take good photos uh, within your communities. So I, I got into um, photographing seniors uh, when I was about 20, 21 years old. I had this uh, homework assignment at Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo to take a portrait of a, a World War II veteran. And this World War II veteran ended up telling me this really dramatic war story, how he triggered a mind and shrapnel came out and he nearly died. And I thought, holy cow, this World War II veteran or World War II soldier when he was in war is the same age as I was when I was taking his photo. You know, he was 20, 21 while, you know, over in Europe. And here I am, uh, you know, 21 here in, you know, California. And I had the easy life. And, you know, it really put my life in a perspective. And my my grandfather was a, a World War II veteran, and his brother died in the Battle of the Bulge. And so I thought I'm gonna travel the country and photograph as many World War II veterans as I can. And the senior living uh, community um, uh, called Belmont Village Senior Living heard of my project and I teamed up with them and it's actually still ongoing. And I photograph veterans living in their communities and every photo shoot um, results in a permanent exhibition. Uh, I should probably go back to this, but I ended up getting a coffee table book published with, at, uh, excuse me, ended up getting a coffee table book published with Random House uh, when I was 25 years old of all my World War II veteran portraits and their stories. And this is Bob Watson. He was at D-Day and he helped make the movie uh, Saving Private Ryan uh, with Spielberg and Tom Hanks as a historian that was on set to make sure that the scenes were, were uh, historically accurate. Um, this is a World War II veteran uh, woman here that I photographed in Nashville, Tennessee. And here um, I'm blending in uh, backgrounds into their stories just to just to go beyond the portrait. And I am going to be showing more traditional you know, portraits today, of course, as well. And then here, here's another one here shot in uh, San Jose, California. So one thing I, I, I'm going to probably sound like a broken record uh, during this presentation, but I just can't stress the importance of uh, being a good storyteller. You want to find residents that have character to photograph, that live within your you know, residential uh, assisted living homes. Um, here is a couple that I photographed. I was hired to um, photograph couples that, were, that have been married for over 50 years. And um, I really love this series, just celebrating their love. And they gave me a bunch of good tips. Um, 
that, you know, the audience also got to hear as well, you know, and to have a long marriage, you know, don't make up before you go to bed, you know, laugh a lot. And these are things that, you know, communities can do, you know, they could photograph a couple, you know, even if it's with your phone and, you know, they could talk about some sort of tip that the couple um, wants to share about how they lived a long uh, uh, life and how they, uh, excuse me, how they've had a long marriage. Um, again, here's another extreme, you know, um, senior here, and it's unlikely, you know, this 75 year old weightlifter might be living in your, you know, community. It's, it's possible, right? He's in incredibly good health, but, you know, again, there's so much character here. Um, he started weightlifting when he was 40 and now he's 75 and he holds something like 70 world records in weightlifting. And then here's Jeffrey here again, uh, the cyclist. Um, and then here's another individual. She started writing books when she was 70 years old and she lived, this is pretty crazy, she lived to 112 years old. And in that time period, which, you know, it's a lot more of life, you're 70, you lived to 112, that's what, what, 42 more years of life. In that time period, she wrote something like 12 books. And on a quick side note, I, I uh, did used to live in Los Angeles, that's where I launched my career. It was my goal for a little while to be a celebrity photographer. Um, and here I was hired by Variety, uh, Variety Magazine to, I, to photograph these uh, group of celebrities uh, for this big charity event. And I had something like 15 minutes to photograph them. But I, but I decided that you know, within that celebrity industry in LA, it was just too competitive. And working with seniors uh, was just much, much more rewarding. So um, I own two companies. The first company we're going to talk about is called SeniorStockPhotos.com, and then I have another one called SeniorLivingPhotography.com. So um, here's an image from my stock photography site, and we're going to go and, and navigate the, the website here just in a few minutes. Um, but what I want to show you guys is that I'm very um, in on what is going on within the industry. So you know, I get tips from Molly. Um, I am also a partner with um, Senior Living Foresight, and they tell me, you know, interesting uh, kind of trending thing they need, the trending things they need. So right now, it's very big that seniors are doing a lot of online shopping. So I went and shot stock photos of that. Uh, of course, sanitary, um, you know, clean, you know, cleaning is is very important right now during COVID. So we have, you know, sanitary images, caretaker images is obviously very important. Um, brain health is very important. You know, this image can be used for showcasing activities that are going on within your homes and communities. Uh, it's uh, very important uh, that we have ethnic diversity. Uh, that's something that's being stressed really, really hard right now within the senior living industries. So I'm trying really hard to get more ethnic uh, diverse portraits um, and, and modern portraits as well, you know, on my stock site. Um, Again, here's a you know a great character here. Uh, it's typically unusual to see a senior in their 80s with long hair, and she's this bohemian artist. And uh, I just love this. I love this portrait, and um, she just has so much character. And um, so you know, I have a wide variety of of different um, types of portraits on here. And we're going to talk about the lighting um, on her uh, later in this presentation. Of course, I have mask photos, um, which you know. Uh, we're we're needing you know dog photos. Um, even you know uh, uh, a senior living industry company said we need more of the Alexa you know Echo. I think these are called assisted. There's a particular term for it. Um, I think it's called a digital assistant. But you know show, showcasing you know these you know uh, I guess it's called Echoes you know as well within senior living communities. You know family members with seniors. You know virtual reality is becoming more popular. Um, and then just simple, nice banner images of, of positive, you know, looking seniors. And I also have a lot of illustrations that are definitely more hip. I, we're seeing a lot more illustrations in, in advertising. And even like, if you guys sit down and watch TV this evening, you're gonna see some commercials with more illustrations. And so I, I have that as well. And I do try and make them, you know, fun and, and more hip uh, and, and that have character. And here's our you know, senior ladies again as well. That's available on the stock side and, and the gentlemen uh, musicians here. So I really try to add a lot of character. And then the stock prices for, and I'm not gonna spend very little time on this. You know, there's a um, 
it varies in uh, price by size. So a smaller image, 75. And then if you wanted to blow it up to the size of a billboard, you know, that's 550. I offer a bulk discount rate. Uh, you can see here, um, just email me, you guys, uh, if you're interested. And uh, I'll break this down more clearly for you. And then I also have um, a stock uh, subscription as, as well. Um, and this is a lot cheaper in comparison to companies like Getty and, and Adobe. So um, here's the beginning of our uh, tip presentation here in terms of senior living images. But I do want to show you um, my, my websites here. So this is my stock photo website. And um, you got to click through to these galleries here. And I have it broken down into the really specifics of uh, what companies need um, within the senior living industry. I have a, a general section here, right? And you'll see some of the photos that I showed in my presentation. And also, you know, I try to have alternates, right? If you, you know, I think I showed, what image did I show? I think I showed this image here uh, of the VR a senior wearing the headset. You know, I have other options as well, you know, so I really try and shoot a lot of variety. And here he is more serious, putting it on. Um, obviously, it's more playful. Um, so I try and add variety to all my, my stock photos. Um, obviously, being connected to families is really big right now. And, you know, there's more illustrations in there. Um, and then I'm trying pretty hard to add, you know, images and illustrations on a, on a weekly basis. So I got a fitness section here. You know, there's the more illustrations. I'm trying to use more hip imagery as well. This image uh, really took off on LinkedIn, right? This, you know, fit senior. Um, it doesn't always have to be, you know, so stereotypical. Not that it's bad to have a senior with resistance bands or doing chair yoga, but, you know, why not showcase, you know, hipper images as, as well? And as we, one thing I should mention, and I hear this a lot, that, you know, as the baby boomers, you know, the, the later baby boomers are getting older now. I think they're, is it, are they around the age of uh, 75? Is that, does that sound right, Molly? Yeah, I mean, some of them can probably be upwards of old, definitely older than 75, I believe. Right, so, so the baby boomers, you know, who are from that 60s generation don't necessarily perceive them. They don't perceive themselves as looking like their parents' generation. They wouldn't be perceived as, as cool and, and, and hip. So I think it's important to, to showcase that. Of course, you know, I have the more stereotypical stretch band images there. Um, and then here's, you know, a bunch of fun ladies doing yoga. Um, and then I also wanted to show, you know, I also have, you know, kind of more artistic images as well. Um, maybe this is so specific. This was shot for a senior Olympics. I shot a bunch of senior Olympians, you know, but I do kind of have, um, you know, more artistic images a, a, as well. Um, you know, I, and, I, and then I have some baby boomer stock photos in here. Again, I'm not going to spend too much time going through these. Um, caretaker images. I'd have some grandkids in here. This is me just more ruthlessly shooting some of my family members, of course. But, you know, the grandkid photos, are I think, are needed from time to time. I have some veteran images in here. It's a pretty small library. I need to build this up. And also I need to build up my uh, stock, my um, holiday section here. These are kind of more silly and fun. And this is, you know, very loud and, and playful, of course, but, uh, you know, kind of a fun Christmas banner there. And then my, my regular, my other website, this is my commission base website. And this is just showcasing specific jobs that I've shot for senior living companies. So here are a collection of images that I shot for Kisco Senior Living, and this is shot um, you know, all, all over the country at um, different communities from California to North Carolina. Um, you can see my veterans in there that I, you know, briefly spoke about. Um, here's that Lasting Love series. Um, and then i uh, show you some other ones here. Here's a series I did on, um, on immigrants, on a senior living kind of a low um, low cost um, community um, in the San Francisco Bay Area here. Um, and I do a lot of films um, as, as well, which I'm, I'm not going to show right now, but um, there should be a play button there. Yeah. Um, and here's like an interesting POV film I did. One other thing I actually want to touch upon before we move back to the presentation. This is a film here I did on a 90 um, uh, year old who. Um, is a really passionate, 
painter and um, she has this really positive outlook on life, uh, but she's going blind. And this video, the short film, ended up getting over a million views, and it got picked up on Upworthy several years ago. But one thing I can't stress more to companies is trying to create good video, uh, videos of the seniors that live within your communities. Because, like, you know, let's say you know Lynn here happens to live in one of your communities. Um, when you have this really positive senior, and you're able to showcase, you know, their personality, and people are able to see that, you know, through social media, or your website then your community gets associated with you know, positive individuals like, like Lynn here. Um, so let's, let's go back to our presentation here. So first and foremost, you are a storyteller. So before you take that photo, I want you guys to think about what is the story that you're trying to tell. What are you trying to communicate to your audience? Um, what are you, there you go, what are you trying to communicate to your residential assisted living home audience? So at your community, there are events, you have remodels um, that you need to photograph after, you, you know, uh, maybe a bedroom or kitchen has been updated. There are people that have led, led interesting lives, that's me touching upon Lynn, the painter there, or the cyclist that's riding his bike 150 miles a week, or, or the writer that, you know, is the 70 year old that lived to be 112, that's writing the 12 books. You know, you need to show, you showcase seniors with family members, seniors with employees, uh, all-star employees, dining, new residents, talented seniors, and exteriors. So this is your story, right? These, all these, all these tough subjects here are part of your story. So be a storyteller, okay? Um, you wanna create a photo that is both, that both has a strong story and is technically correct but it's better to have a photo that's technically weak, but has a strong story. And I say that because there are photos out there, we've seen them on social media, and we've seen videos where, yeah, that's not a very good photo, and that's not a very good video, the quality's not great, but the story's still there, and, that, and that's all that matters. Um, and you're, you're generally creating um, happy moments that represent your residential assisted living homes. Um, you want to find residents with character and personality, right? As I said, I'm gonna sound like a broken record, and you want to create authentic moments. So, you know, here is a wonderful example of this resident. She dresses up every day. It looks like she's wearing her Sunday's best every day. Um, she gets dressed like this. So showcase these seniors that have this really positive outlook on life. Again, here's, here's Linda here again. It's my wife's aunt, uh, great aunt Linda. Again, a ton of character, right? Really beautiful older woman, the long hair, the artwork, she's really interesting. So showcase these seniors in your social media and on your websites. Try different angles, close up, wide angle from above. And it's usually better not to shoot from a low angle. And I say that, as I'm sure a lot of you know, like if you're doing a Zoom video call, usually when your computer is really low or that you're, you're shooting your camera or a low angle up at someone's neck, it's usually not very complimentary. Now, now there are rules that, that, that um, that where you can shoot that low angle, you can break that, but usually it's just better to, sh to stay away from shooting low. Uh, when you shoot different angles, you get more use out of your photo shoot in terms of posting different shots to social media as, as well. Take your time, frame the shot, add props to help tell the story, and be resourceful. So we're gonna get into some images here. So here is a photo shoot I was doing for a, a company, and to be honest, there happened to be, a, it was just th that time of the season, and there happened to be a bunch of lemons and oranges coincidentally growing out in the parking lot. We didn't plant it, we went and grabbed, we went and picked a bunch of the lemons and oranges. There happened to be a basket de decoration, I think had potpourri or something random in it, or just some kind of, I don't know, some sort of strange decoration. We emptied it out, we put the uh, fruit in there, and it was really spontaneous. So be resourceful for, for what you have, uh, you know, around your community, but also be spontaneous, be willing to, to um, you know, come up with fun concepts. Also, we're going to talk more about this, but think, think about um, having, um, what's the word, uh, a lot in your images. Like, I always want to see, like, an extra amount of, of, of stuff. Like, if this has had one yellow or said one lemon and one orange in here, it looked kind of empty, right? You want to make sure there's an excessive amount of kind of rich um, objects in, in images. 
So capture ethnic diversity when possible. Of course, of course, that's really, really important these days. And generally stay away from the fly on the wall photojournalism approach as you have less control. Now, if you're like a really confident photographer and, I, and you're pro professional, you know, uh, that, that, that's okay. You can try the fly on the wall appro approach. What I mean is you're standing there, you know, trying to capture the event in some way. But generally, I think it's better to post people within the senior living industry because it gives you more control to create a better image. Um, you can have people engage with each other and also have them look at the camera. So here I have two residents. They're, you know, picking radishes and, you know, again, see, we have another full basket and they're gardening, right? And I just told these, I told the senior, you know, I, I think I told them something like, hey, you know, feed, I think I told this guy, feed this guy the radish or something, you know, and he took a bite out of it and they felt really silly and ridiculous. And then they started goofing around and it created this really natural moment. So you kind of, you have to direct people in a way to create natural moments and to get them laughing and smiling. And here, you know, the uh, seniors are looking at the camera and that means they're addressing the audience. So clothing, you know, if you guys put on an event, you know, if you're putting on your a Thanksgiving event or Christmas event coming up here, you know, you can ask residents or you can help them um, pick up bright, um, bright colored clothing um, and, and try to have them avoid wearing outfits with large logos or like an old, you know, dirty baseball t-shirt, you know, unless maybe it's a baseball games on, but still trying to avoid the large logos because you don't want the logo to take away from, um, from the image. So props help tell a story, you know, utilize what you have uh, within the community. So here, you know, here's a, they're watching a college football game and we have all these cookies out, you know, again, it's, you know, there's a lot going on here. All the bowls are full um, here. You know, we could probably could have um, rotated the logo a little bit more, but here the logos are okay, right? Because it's about a football game and it helps tell a story. So there should always be an abundance of food uh, or a busy dining table. That's the word I was trying to look for, abundance, when I was talking about the gardening earlier. So you want a really busy table. Um, again, you want to show this feeling of, of abundance. Um, turn bottle labels away when possible. So I kind of got ahead of myself there, right? So you don't, you don't want to make this look like a beer ad. You want to make it look like a senior living advertisement. Uh, food, so make sure there's a lot of color when you can. And if the food does not look appetizing in the photo, then don't then don't post it, don't don't show it. So I know seniors aren't eating surf and turf dinners every night, right? But just here's an example of showing a lot of color on a plate. So here is a crock pot or a pressure cooker full of meatballs. Now it might taste delicious, but this photo does not look appetizing, okay? Don't shoot it like in the pot. Put it on a plate, you know, as I was saying, I'm, let's say my mouth is watering looking at this image, right? So, you know, I said add more color, right? So put a little bit of some basil on there, the cheese, and, and then it becomes more interesting, right? And you don't have to be necessarily a professional photographer to create food imagery. I, I think shooting food is really pretty easy. You stick it next to a window here, get some nice window light. And if you can dress it up uh, in, in a way like this, and this is not a complicated, you know, and any uh, kind of food prop styling set up here, and, and anyone could really do this, I think. Um, it's, um, it's just something that's really important, I think, in taking good, fo good food photos. And as you know, seniors and their family members are always curious about the food. So it's really important to have good food photos. So you know, highlight sections of the residential uh, assisted living homes when possible in your portraits. And you know, this is obviously a larger senior living community here, and this is an extreme, very extreme example, right? Um, but, you know, here's the fire pit, right? And I think it's good to show this, you know, at our senior living, you know, home or community, um, you know, we have this fire pit and we have the people sitting around it, you know? So if there's a nice garden in the background, in the backyard or a nice, you know, seated patio area, always try and showcase that in some way, even if it's, you know, somewhat subtle in, in photos. So portrait lighting, so portraiture is really my, my big specialty here. Um, backlighting is, uh, creates even lighting on the face and the sun is behind the person. And this usually exists between morning and afternoons. 
So here, the sun is behind the person, and you know, here, this is where the camera would be. So here's a perfect example, backlighting, the sun's behind these individuals. And what's also interesting is if you have a, a lighter colored building, you can um, bring the subjects kind of close to the building. And if the sun's behind them, the sun will kick off the side of the house uh, or the structure and will kick back light onto your subjects filling in their faces um, more clearly. Get another example here, sun's behind them. And when the sun's behind them and you're shooting the portrait, it really makes um, a much more complimentary image. And this is how a lot of lifestyle fashion photographers even shoot their images of you know, um, models as well. And when you have a little sun flare in the image, that adds a feeling of, of energy. So when you can incorporate some sun flare in there as well, it really adds a feeling of energy and warmth. So I, I definitely highly recommend that. Um, so even direct lighting, this brings out the wrinkles and generally try not to use direct sunlight. So this is where the sun would be behind the subject matter and you know, it's hitting the individual directly in their face here. So here's an example, direct light and open shade light, right? So generally, there is sometimes where the some clouds might be in front of the sun and the direct sunlight is hitting the person. It does look nice, but generally just try and turn the person away from the sun to get that even light in. So interior lighting is uh, really big. Um, you want to place residents near a window when you can and use the natural light. Avoid using the overhead ceiling lights. So here's a younger version of me back here when I was 30, I'm 36 now, maybe a little younger than that, whatever. <laughs> and uh, I'm in grad school and see I have this overhead light on, on here, right? And then I have some window light coming in here. It's not very complimentary lights, it's mixed lighting set up. Not to say mixed lighting is bad, but this overhead light is adding these shadows in here, right? But I turned off the light. This is always kind of funny and cheesy, I think. Turned off that light and I have some window light coming in here, sitting on the side of my face and I have better, better, nicer shadows or nicer shadows in here. See that? That shadow's not really complimentary here. So I turned my face more towards the window and I got better lighting. So here's that example I was talking about earlier. Here's Aunt, Aunt Linda, great Aunt Linda. And I just had her stand. I just, I think I actually just opened up some doors or opened up some windows really large. I have some really wonderful light coming in hitting her face. But if she was standing back here against the wall, it wouldn't look as good. It would be darker because she's further away from the light source. So when you're photographing your seniors, bring them, uh, or your employees, bring them closer to the window sources. So model rooms and architecture. So generally, uh, this is a pretty big rule of thumb. Uh, when you are shooting architecture, you wanna shoot horizontally because it makes the space larger. You wanna shoot from the angle of your waist that also makes the space larger. You wanna make sure the camera is straight. I know that seems silly, but when you're shooting an architectural image, uh, if, you're, if your camera's a little crooked and everything else looks, there's so many lines in it, it's like really noticeable. When I say lines, I mean the couch or the lamp or the table. So really try and make sure it's straight. And then interiors, turn all the lights on in the room. So here's an example uh, I shot for a company. All the lights are on. Um, you know, we we had the uh, we had the bathroom door open at first, and you could directly see the toilet, and it just didn't make much sense to us. So we decided to close it. Right? We could also open up the door, and um, you know, have that have that image, you know, in your gallery if someone ever you know wants to see it without you know coming into the to the community. And there's a nice balance here again. All the lights are on. You know, I think these are fake cakes. You know, there's definitely a, a way to buy props to you know decorate the environment. Some nice color in here. It feels really clean. And there's a nice balance here, just in terms of the the composition. So in this image here, this is the model room apartment that, that isn't working. Okay, this is a work in progress image. And here here's some tips. So um, you know this. Um, pillow here is crooked, so that should have been corrected. This light here should have been on. And here's those big AC units that are just so ugly, right? They're, but they're in all the rooms generally, right? So, or, or, or some of the time. And so you really want to try and um, hide those and you can stick a bunch of fake plants in front of it. And that's not that you're being unauthentic, right? But you're just trying to get a good photo. You want the positive features to come out. Um, and then when shooting, 
when shooting um, you know, exteriors, and again, this is a larger senior living community, you could do the same thing with, with the house. Um, try and get a little bit of, of greenery in there. It'll help showcase the, the properties a, a little bit better. And if you can, you know, try and remove the parked cars in this situation we couldn't. But what I really like emphasizing is getting lower when shooting these um, like landscape architectural images of your properties. And just try and get like a little grass in there or try and get some larger bush sources or trees so it just really frames the image you know, much better. Um, and again, we took this common dining area and uh, you know, speaking of props, we just put a simple book there, you know, put a few coffee cups on there and uh, just those little accent uh, props you know, really make a big difference in, in, in these photos. Um, and also we had, I think there was something like six chairs on this side and six chairs, the same chairs all lined up. It just didn't look very good. I mean, it's nice to know that there's like a lot of, you know, comfy, I don't know what you call these chairs, not lazy boys, but comfy chairs to sit in. Um, but we just got rid of the clutter and made it a little bit more simple or a lot more simple, I should say. So uh, use the flash when in a dark room and place the people near a wall or use a flash uh, if it is dark outside. And you know, if you don't have a professional camera, all of our phones have pretty nice flashes on them these days. And in here, these ladies are playing pool. There's no window lighting. So you know, using that hard flash on them you know, really adds a nice, nice energy. Um, and here's the, the larger image here. And that hard flash definitely kind of has like this fun party energy as, as well. So color versus black and white. So here's this portrait of Jackson Brown I took uh, several years ago. And sometimes um, I, I do think that you guys should try and consciously think, you know, should this image be in color or in black and white? This is the image I ended up choosing that was published was the black and white. And what I felt was that this color image is, is already pretty neutral. Like, you know, his shirt's brown, um, you know, this, this, um, the Gibson thing here is you know, kind of this gold woodish color, but it really wasn't that important to me as a color image. And so I changed it to a black and white because I make because I think it makes them feel more more iconic. Again, you know, here's a black and white image of a of a couple kissing. And again, you know, I here I am breaking the rule, shooting at a lower angle, and, and that's okay, right? But I'm I'm not so I'm not so concerned about you know making their faces look bad you know they're kissing and it's really a, a sweet sweet image so you know I, I give you guys a lot of rules and I encourage you to break them but just be very conscious of it so um, everything you have uh, learned today basically applies to filmmaking in terms of the composition and and, and lighting. Uh, photography is a manipulation of the truth but that doesn't mean that it's not truthful. Uh, and then you always want to pick the image that conveys the most emotion for posting to social media or the potential resident, as long as it represents the community in a positive way. So be be very co co uh, conscious, you know, before you post that photo on your website, social media, send it to a potential client. Really make sure you know represents your community, uh, you know, residential assisted living home in a very very positive, clear way. And don't forget, you are a storyteller. You want to convey emotion to the viewer. Even if it's in an apartment, right? Even if there's no one in the apartment room or the bedroom that you're sending, if you see a nice clean bedroom and the bed's made and everything looks nice, that still gives your potential resident family member confidence that you know this is like a warm place where they could possibly live. Uh, and again, here are my websites, seniorlivingvisuals.com, seniorstockphotos.com, and then this is my TomSandersPhoto.com. That's one of more the celebrities and uh, kind of more modern artistic portraits on there. And here's my email uh, as well. I probably should include my phone number, um, but you can find my phone number on any one of these websites here. Um, so yeah. So now um, let's open it up for some questions. Yeah. So guys, I know that was um, just a quick stop. I know it takes some time to type in questions. So just let me know if you guys have questions. You can type those in. But I do have some questions. So Cool. Um, Tom, you also do where you go out and take pictures for people at their communities. It's, as Correct. in other words, you're like contracted to do that, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm commissioned, and I um, work for a large amount of uh, companies. You know, all, all over all over the country. Um, let me go back to my homepage here. You can see a big uh, list of all my you know clients. This is my shortened uh, client list right here. I need to and add so all how did that. 
how did that happen? How did you get into just doing like being known for doing senior living photography? Yeah, that's a great question. So I, I should I should have mentioned mentioned earlier. I'm also a professor at the Savannah College of Art and Design in in Georgia, and we've been out here for a, a year now. Um, but I got into um, so the more niche oriented you are as a photographer, uh, the more successful you will be. And so, um, like I was saying, I was living in LA, building up you know my 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 senior living work, but simultaneously. I was also photographing the celebrities as well and trying to go in that route. And um, it just made sense to me just to s exclusively go into the senior living uh, industry. But also, uh, there, uh, you know, the senior living images, there are good images and films on, on, you know, for senior living companies, but generally they don't represent seniors very well. Like with my stock site, I'm photographing actual residents or actual people that are of age that would live in these communities, right? And a lot of the times uh, we see seniors in advertising that don't, rep they look much younger. It's like a 60 year old uh, that they're showing in the advertisement, but really they need like a 75 or an 80 year old in their advertisement. And so I really try and create you know, authentic imagery within the senior living industry. Um, but yeah, I just, I just about, at about 30, I said, I'm only gonna dedicate you know, my business to doing senior, senior living uh, work. And there's really no one else doing it. Um, and so it just, it really took off. Yeah, well, I can tell you firsthand, you know, coming from somebody who does marketing for a, a senior related company, right? Just finding images that are appealing, A, and B, that, like you said, that look like residents that may live in the communities that we have. And so, um, this is a great question that just came up. It said, should we get permission or waivers signed by seniors and or their families before posting on their REL website? Oh yeah, that's a fantastic question. Yes, you should get a model release when they move in. And, and generally, I know with a lot of senior living um, companies, they do, um, like when they move in, they normally do sign a model release. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely highly, highly suggest that. And you, well, you and I know it's a lot. simple, oh, it could be a simple question on their, on their intake form. You know, many times that when you put your kid in school, I have kids at school age, they ask, can we use photos of your child for our website? Right. And so uh, it's the same type of thing. Can we use photos of you for our website or for our advertisements in any way? I can imagine that would work. Right. Yeah. That's a great question. Yeah. There's also, an, um, and you know, it's like when they move in, they could sign that model release form. Um, but there's also an app that Getty Images created called Easy Release, and it's only I think five dollars, and it's a very thorough model uh, release that I then it's really easy to use on the phone or iPad, and then you just you know then you send it to yourself um, afterwards. So I, I recommend that. Yeah, and I can tell you that a lot of times I go to many of the senior care websites or or places that that have just social media pages, not even websites, and mm. they definitely need some help with their photos. So I think that this right. is gonna be extremely educational for everyone, just knowing how to take those photos or even having a place to go to now to take, to not take, but to be able to have access to mm -hmm. photos that look like people that we want living in our care homes that live in other care homes and can be interacting with each other many times people are just sitting there and they're not really doing anything and so you give some great tips on how to get people to interact with each other and and be more interesting a lot more interesting photos and i think you guys will see a lot more people wanting to come into your homes if your photos portray that the that the environment that they live in is a happy environment right yeah, yeah. And, you know, I'm always, like I was saying within the presentation, I'm always open to ideas. If someone, you know, wants me to go, you know, I, I'm shooting my stock photos pretty much on a weekly basis. Someone can email me and say, you know, I need some more photos of, I don't know, senior. I, we have a ping pong table at our, you know, at our home. We need some photos of seniors playing ping pong. Like I will try to incorporate that, you know, into my stock photos if, if that helps uh, people out. So I'm definitely, definitely open to that. And like I was saying before, you know, I'm definitely trying to pay attention to what's trending, you know, seniors online shopping or, you know, creating more ethnic diversity. I had a company actually in Florida reach out to me and they said they wanted, you know, uh, baby boomer uh, Hispanic seniors. And so I went and shot it. So I'm totally open to, to ideas.
Yeah, and so that brings up where are you located and do you travel if someone wanted you to come out and take pictures for their for their care home? Yeah, I um I I I'm I'm lo currently located in Savannah, Georgia and I do travel all over the country and you know very safely of course, especially during COVID. Um I I have a photo shoot actually in Pennsylvania uh, in a few weeks and um usually I this job I'm shooting studio portraits that are going to be similar to um to to this image to this image here of the cyclist of adding background imagery into it but i, I can do this photo shoot by myself and normally i would have a photo uh, assistant on set with me i said let's just be safe i'll just show up and shoot it myself um and then actually i have a job in um denver colorado for a tech for a senior living tech company that i'm waiting to hear about so i i travel all over south you know west coast and i'm a west coast boy at heart you know, been out here in the South now and I'm, you know, enjoying a nice change of pace, but I definitely am out on the West Coast a lot too, so. And so, you know, something interesting just for you guys, I, on Tom's website, he has some photos of people who live, probably live in care homes and they're holding old photos of themselves. I think there was one just right there, wasn't there? Down further. Um, so they're holding okay. photos of themselves and I love that. So not only okay. are you helping them reminisce, in you right. know the old times there you go reminisce in old times and you're getting to know them at the same time so you're making them feel like you care about them because you do and i know it's very hard to convince these people sometimes that are coming into assisted living that you're, they're going to come into another loving caring home like their own but right. it's things like this things like taking pictures of these people with pictures of them when they're younger learning about them this is how you're going to help your residents open up to you and it's going to make you look like the community that you're trying to portray to the rest of the world um yeah, you know, so that's that's a great oh go ahead i'm gonna cut you off no no it's okay actually before we go into the next question let's let's say what you're gonna say I, what I was going to say was that you're totally correct about that there is uh, an innate interest and what we look like when we were younger. And there's a reason why Ancestry.com and 23andMe and those companies are so big because people want to you know, know about their backgrounds and people are seriously innately interested just about the passing of time and in, in, in people's individual backgrounds. And you're totally right. Having, I, I'm, not, I'm sure I have a photo somewhere of a senior you know, holding a photo of themselves within a community but people love seeing the transformation of time. So it's definitely a great tip and reminder, Molly, in terms of you know, holding up those younger photos of themselves. Yeah, I know I saw them somewhere and I just thought that is such a great idea, right? So yeah, the next yeah. question says, how has your senior living photography business grown in the past two to three years? And do you feel it represents an increased momentum in the residential assisted living business? Yeah, my, my business keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, like I was saying, um, um, well, I guess I didn't say this yet. Um, the population is only growing, right? So seniors, this is, that's kind of one of the reasons I also started this business is because it, the senior living industry is, as the population grows, seniors aren't going to need communities to live within. And I really think it's kind of like a bulletproof industry that's only going to grow and grow and grow. Um, and uh, really, even through the recession in 2008 and you know COVID this year, it really hasn't affected my my business too much. Um, and so it definitely keeps uh, increasing, increasing. And also, like I was saying, you know, there's not much competition for me, you know, with, within this industry. You know, most photographers are you know wanting to shoot more stereotypical subject matters, you know, that are, and that are also kind of more highly competitive. All right. Well, that looks like it's our last question of the evening. But if you guys have any other questions, you can reach out to Tom directly. Um, if you want to go back to your contact page there, Tom, yeah, yeah. you guys can reach out go. to him. So TomSandersPhoto.com, SeniorStockPhotos.com is the seniors photos and info at TomSandersPhoto.com is the email that you can send. Um, Tom, I thank you so much for being here with us tonight. And I am so excited. Like he said, you know, and I even gave you some ideas. I think the first time I talked to you where I was like, Hey, can you take pictures that look like they're in a house instead of in a big, <laughs> huge residence, you know, where it's right. like, that's not where my residents live, or that's not where my potential residents are going to live. So 
Tom will take your, like he said, he's traveling all over the place. He's taking photos actively all the time. So if you have suggestions or if you have things that you see that are not being taken or you would like to see in photos, I'm sure that he's happy to listen and he's happy to see what he can do to help you guys. So yeah. I thank you for that too. Thank you, Molly. These are the photos I went and shot, you know, right away after you said that. And, and I'm building up a larger image library currently of getting more, you know, at home uh, locations as well for, for the, you know, Rolla community. Yeah, absolutely. And and because this community is growing and that's what everybody's, you know, hearing right now. And that's what everybody's working towards is making sure that we have these small home communities available for our growing senior community. And right. And the the images that we put out there need to portray that as well, because not everybody's going to go live in this big box hotel, right? Correct. Yeah, that's correct. It also depends where you live. You know, if you're, you know, living in Chicago, there's a ton of senior living communities, right? But if you live on, you know, the suburbs or outskirts, you know, there are these opportunities for smaller communities, you know, to yeah. and, and smaller homes that are more intimate, you know, and it's again, it just depends on, you know, so many different circumstances. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I hope you have a wonderful evening and everyone else, thank you for thank you. being here with us and, and reach out to Tom if you have questions and look through his photos. I'm telling you, you guys are going to be impressed. They're absolutely beautiful. They'll give you ideas for your own home and maybe he can come out and help you with that too. Excellent. Thanks, Molly. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye.